Hi, welcome to our presentation. I'm Monica Navarro and my partner is... I'm Erin Meyer. And we are doing Buddhism and the afterlife. Um, the reason, well, I wanted to do this topic was because I've always been fascinated with what happens after we live and we die in our life. Yeah, and I was interested in it as well because um, I, I think it's really interesting um, the Buddhist views on afterlife and how it's not really an afterlife but more of a process. So I kind of wanted to dive more into that. And it's just like, it's more interesting to find out what other religions believe in the afterlife, just overall, like as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll go on to the next slide. Um, in Buddhism, there are, they believe in six realms, and I got this all from the book, the Buddhism the Illustrated Guide. Um, these six realms you can either, you can be born into, basically. Um, the first realm is the, like, us human beings, um, and it is believed that humans are only, the only thing that are able to reach nirvana after maintaining good karma. But to achieve um, nirvana, you have to have good karma for over, I believe, like 30,000 years. Um, so it takes a long, long time and like a long, long process to even reach the chance of getting nirvana. And you have to have good karma throughout that entire time. Um, the second realm, um, you are born into the heavens. Um, I think it, they said it was believed to be one of the 26 heavens. Um, you're born, a, you are born as a deity. And um, after being, I think it was after being born into a human or a deity, um, it's harder. It's harder to get into nirvana because your goal as a deity is to become a human, so you can reach nirvana. Um, in the heavens, there's no suffering, there's no work, there's basically everything's peaceful, and so it's really hard to achieve good karma simply because everything is already like there and set in place. So there's like no way for you to do wrong in the heavens. So there's no way for you to have good karma. So it's just all like equal. Um, the third realm is being reborn as a demon. Um, you have these superpowers, but they're mainly dominated by anger. And it's all because of your bad karma in your past life. Um, demons can affect humans. Um, and they can affect like different aspects of life simply because they are a demon. They are more like of a spirit of a spirit rather than like a human form. Um, and then you can, you are reborn into a demon, but it's really hard for you to um, find good karma wall as a demon. So usually you're a demon for about 30,000 years once again, um, simply because it's hard to achieve good karma when you're a demon that's dealing with anger. And it's, it also has to do with the cycle of karma because if you're, you have really bad karma in your past life and you're reborn into a demon, it's because you had that bad karma. Um, let's go to the next realms. And then the, um, the fourth realm is for restless spirits. Um, basically, it means that people were excessively attached to their human life and that's when they are born into spirits. Um, in the, when you become a spirit, you are born with a big stomach, or it's said to be you're born with a big stomach, um, but with a little throat. So you are always um, having that feeling of being hungry, but not being able to eat. Or you're able to eat, but very, very little. So it's just like a constant um, like trouble. Um, and then it is believed that they are released once every year into like the the human spirit world or the, the human realm um simply so that they can eat and they can like have something in their stomach um i believe it's more like of a of a suffering that they want people to go through so that they understand that you can't be you have to have good karma and, stuff. and then um in the buddhist religion a lot of people that um, are this religion, they leave a plate of food on the side of the table 
while they are eating or they leave food outside of their homes for the spirits to come and be able to eat with them. Um, the, filth, the fifth realm is hell, um, better known as or purgatory. Um, there are eight cold hells and then eight hot hells, um, and they are all made for suffering. Um, it's basically you suffer for um, a long, long time too, um, and that's basically all they're there for. Um, there's you have your hells for torture, and then you can go through different hells rather than just one. In while you're born into hell. Um, it's also known as purgatory because it's hard to get out or stay in. It's just like the middle ground. And then once you, you're done with your suffering, you can be reborn into um, a human being or like something different. The sixth realm in the, is the animal realm. Um, people, in, according to the book, it's similar to being born into purgatory because apparently when you are reborn into an animal, it is really hard to maintain good karma simply because you can't do the same actions as like offering people things or like it's, it's I honestly never knew that this was an actual thing um, simply because you you don't think that animals would be you don't think of animals to be born into like purgatory like you don't think you don't see it as suffering them for, suffering for them but in reality it is because they can't communicate and they're, but they're there, like they know that you're there. Um, on the side, I have a picture of the wheel of life. Um, basically it symbolizes how um, karma is basically like the cycle of life and it can take you to the different heavens or it can take you to the different hells. Um, it's just a lot, of, a lot of things take place into being born into these realms and your karma is uh, ultimately what depends on where you go and what realm you're reborn into. But the more preferable one was one of the first realms. It's the first realm or the second realm. But even the second realm is a little hesitant simply because it's harder to mean, like to do anything in the second realm simply because you can't attain better karma. Um, so the next slide. All right, so um, karma is something that um, most people know the word and have a general understanding of what it is. Um, but in Buddhism, it's a lot more serious. Um, people in our society just kind of use karma as, you know, you, you basically, you get what you give. And um, if you do good, you'll get good. And if you do bad, you'll get bad. And in Buddhism, it has, the same basic understanding, but it's a little bit more. Um, so in Buddhism, every person has karma. Uh, and it's something that is constantly changing. Um, so really, you never really know where you stand um, in regards to your karma, because it's always changing um, at any given time. Um, so there's both positive and negative karma. And um, these are re related to actions, thoughts, and speech. So it's partially in each individual's control, whether you have positive and, or negative karma, but it also is something that can be out of your control as well. So if bad things um, or bad circumstances happen to you, that can also contribute to your negative karma, but it's not directly related to something that you did. Um, it's just kind of something that happens. Um, that's why it's a little bit easy to gain good karma through um, just the way that your mindset is. If you have a positive mindset, um, that can give you positive karma. Um, if you do actions that are giving and have the right intentions and go out of your way to do positive impact for others in the environment around you you can gain positive karma that way and the things that you say so anything that comes out of your mouth um also is affecting your karma um the goal 
the goal in uh, with karma is to gain enough good karma to cancel out the bad. So like I said before, um, bad karma is always going to be there um, just because of what's happening around you. But the, the main objective is to be a good enough and positive enough person to gain enough positive karma to outweigh the bad that happens around you. Uh, karma is really important in Buddhism because it's needed for nirvana. So the, the more positive karma that you have, the more able you will be to reach nirvana. And we'll go over nirvana in a little bit, but um, you can't be negative or have negative mindset or thoughts to reach nirvana. So that goes kind of hand in hand with karma as to why you would need such good karma um, because you need that positive mindset, you need the positive thoughts um, in everything that is in your mind as well as what you do and what you say to reach nirvana. Um, and also karma from a past life can affect you in this one. So that's why it's kind of, it, I don't want to say it motivates, but it gives um, Buddhists something to look forward to if they have good karma in this life. They know that they'll be rewarded for it in the next, or vice versa, where if you gain enough negative karma in this life, that you could possibly be punished for it in the next one. Um, and so... You can go ahead. <laughs> okay, so also like with the, the karma, um, karma is really easy to, like good karma is really easy to attain, but it's kind of harder to get rid of bad karma. And um, like it says, um, karma from this past life can affect you in your present one. Um, a lot of um, Buddhist like teachers or uh, people that teach the, the Buddhist religion um, inflict sort of like fear on like people trying to get um, people getting into Buddhism um, and try by try making people trying to attain good karma by like reading to them or showing them the different hells that they have in their sixth realm. I believe it was sixth realm. Um, simply because fear is always like a motivation to people. And so that's what they're trying to achieve. They're trying to achieve, to help people achieve better karma, um, to achieve better karma. Yeah. Do you want me to move to the next slide? Yeah. Do you want me to? So um, rebirth is, um, like we've already been talking about, um, kind of, the idea of the afterlife in Buddhism. So it's kind of a weird, or it's not weird, it's different than other religions in the fact that the afterlife in Buddhism is more of what will you be reborn into in comparison to you're either going here or here. Um, so rebirth is basically, I guess, the equivalent of an afterlife in Buddhism. Um, so whenever Buddha became enlightened, um, meaning he became of enlightenment in his mind, his thinking, his outlook, his views, um, he was able to see the past lives that he lived. Um, and so he could basically, because he reached that state, he was able to see all the lives that he lived, the suffering that he endured, and um, all of that. So... You can either re be reborn into heaven, earth, or an animal, as we said before. Um, you can also have the purgatory stage as well. Um, the cycle of rebirth is continued until nirvana is reached. So you will keep being reborn <coughs> after each life until you're able to reach nirvana in one of your lives. Um, so as you would think, it's easiest to reach nirvana as a human, I would believe. Um, so I think that's why it's such a big deal that 
you know, as your human life, you take it seriously and you practice the way that you're supposed to um, so that you can hopefully become enlightened and reach nirvana. Um, otherwise, you're just going through this cycle of being reborn into different forms and you're not going to know which one you're going to be reborn into. And then you're kind of stuck there until you can try to reach nirvana. Um, as we said before, it's harder in different realms to gain that positive karma to possibly reach nirvana. Um, so you would want to try to do it in the easiest stage of being here on earth as a human. Um, in Buddhism, we don't believe in souls. So the idea is that a person is made of a collection of their thoughts and their energy. Um, so this is um, one of the main things that critics of Buddhism like to focus on because their argument is how can a person with no soul be reborn and still be the same person. And so Buddhists like to compare the cycle of rebirth as a changing river. So if you think about a river, over time, rivers exist for hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years. Um, so over time, the, ri the river slowly changes shape as it carves out the earth. So over time, it'll slowly get wider or it'll change direction or it'll have a new curve. Um, but it's still the same river. So it still has the same name. It's still the same river that it's always been. It's just changing shape. So that's what rebirth kind of is in Buddhism, where even though a person doesn't have a soul, there's still a collection of thoughts and energy. And although they're changing shape, whatever re wherever they're being reborn, they're still the same entity that they were the whole time. So they may not be um, in the same place, but they're still recognizable based on their energy and their thoughts. Um, so. Another reason, um, or I think something that's really important is the reason Buddhists practice veganism and such a high respect in regard for the earth that we live on is, of course, one, it's important. Um, it's important to respect the planet that we live on for not only our own benefit, but out of respect to the, this giant rock that we're living on and that we don't deserve and all the plants and amazing things that come on it as well as the animals and respecting them and um, not harming them but another reason is because of the rebirthing cycle and the possibility of people or ancestors being reborn into either an animal or possibly a plant um, so I think this is really important because some people may just think it's a practice that um, Buddhists have just because they're all about peace and positive energy and all of that. But really, it's more than that because um, it goes into your ancestry and respecting them and respecting the possibility that you don't know where they went, but it could be them. And so you have to show respect for that. I think it also shows like a, a good sign of karma, basically, because if you respect something, you're going to get respect in return. And so practicing veganism is really important because, like you said, um, you never know when that animal could be somebody else's energy or somebody that had already been suffering. And then like it's not good for you basically to eat somebody that you might have been related to or something like that. Yeah. Uh, to go with the rebirth, it's like, it's kind of scary because you don't know what you're going to be, like, which realm you're going to be reborn into. Um, and so rebirth is so, like, fascinating and so interesting because you simply never know where you're going to go. Because if you were a human in this life, you could have achieved nirvana, but if you didn't, you can either be reborn into being a human, depending on your karma, and then, or you could be reborn into like one of the, the 16 hells. You just never know what you're going to be reborn into. And so I think it's really important to carry good karma with you and just like go through the life that you're living 
with like trying to achieve good karma. Go to the next slide. So nirvana is um, kind of like karma in the sense where um, in our society, people know the word and they have a general understanding of the meaning, but they don't truly know what it all entails, in, especially in Buddhism. Um, so nirvana is something that I found um, kind of confusing whenever we first started this course. Um, it's kind of a, a topic that you I got confused between enlightenment and nirvana, but um, basically you need to have an enlightened state of mind, which means all thinking, basically negativity will cease from your thinking and you have to have positive energy thoughts and just like a peace of mind and you have to have this in order to reach a state of nirvana so um it is kind of the main goal for buddhism um you're you are striving your entire life or lives to reach nirvana and um, like we said before, it could take a really long time. And um, it's something that is hard for a lot of people. And a lot of people don't get it in this life. So they're moved on to the next life where they have to try to attain it as well. Um, the little literal translation is quenching or blowing out. So it's compared to a flame. Whereas you live your life trying to reach nirvana you get passed on to the next life to try to reach nirvana and then once you finally do reach nirvana you kind of just that's it it ends <laughs> um all of your suffering ends and you don't really go anywhere um so there's no heaven or hell after nirvana there's no place to go into it's just once you complete nirvana your suffering is gone and you're gone. Um, so it's compared to a flame, whereas a flame is fire and it's there until it's blown out. And then once it's blown out, it's not a flame anymore. It's kind of just lingering. You know, you have the smoke and then you have the chemicals that were released whenever the flame was out. So that's why it's kind of compared to that is because the flame is just instantaneously gone, but yet there's still some remnants in it in a different form. And that's kind of like Nirvana, whereas once you reach it, you're gone, you're no longer here anymore, um, whether you're on earth, in heaven, in purgatory, or an animal, any of the different realms, you're gone, but you kind of dwindle and there's something that's still left behind, but not in your form. Um, to reach nirvana, you have to get rid of any hatred, greed, and delusion. So any sort of negative energy, you have to not have that exist anywhere. So um, you have to get rid of anxiety, stress, depression as well. Um, that can be something really hard to get rid of. Um, it takes a really long time to be able to get into the headspace of not having any of these um, feelings or thoughts and that's why being becoming enlightened is such a huge and tremendous deal in Buddhism especially um, I think it's important to anyone here on earth um, it can be appl applicable but it has a lot more writing on it <laughs> in Buddhism to try to um, get rid of all of this so that you can reach Nirvana to end your suffering in any life that you may be in um, because this is such a heavy topic, especially for Buddhist, um, Buddhists, um, a lot of people ask, how do I get there? They focus on like the step, they want step-by-step -step instructions on how to reach Nirvana and how they'll do it. How can I do it? Um, is there any better way to do it? Um, and Buddha knew this. And so he really focused his teachings on not to focus on what happens after you reach nirvana, but just on the the 
the ride that you have to go on to get there. So getting your head in the mind, right mental space, living your life, giving to others and helping others, gaining all of your positive karma as much as you can and just letting go of anything negative in your mind. He focuses on that journey instead of what's going to happen afterwards. What's going to happen once I reach Nirvana and I no longer exist? Am I really going to just disappear? Am I going to be stuck, you know, somewhere else? He doesn't want people to be focused on that because that is also contributing to your negative mind space. He just wants you to focus on the positivity. And I think that's really important because he was able to recognize that people would freak out and kind of tend to focus on that when that's not the goal at all. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I agree completely with what you said, um, but with the, like, when you're thinking of Nirvana and, like, what's there and, like, all those things, I think it also adds to the negative mental space, because then you see people are going to start getting, like, anxiety or stressed because they are simply trying to reach Nirvana, like, by simply, like, thinking about it. It's like Buddha wanted you to know that Nirvana was there that it was something that you want to achieve, but not something that you should focus on. Um, and that, like I said before, earlier, it does take 30,000 of years to reach. So there's a lot of like time in between where you can get rid of your stress and anxiety and depression and all of that. And it's like, it's a good amount of time for you to find out like where you need to be. Next slide. Um, our next slide is the Buddhism versus other religions. Um, I was raised um, Roman Catholic, so to me, it was really interesting, like, learning, like, the difference um, between the afterlife and Buddhism. Um, uh, there isn't, like, one simple afterlife in Buddhism. It's just being reborn until you reach nirvana. Um, like I said in the past slide, it's 30,000 30, years before you can even reach nirvana um and in catholic like my catholic religion it's basically like once you die um you either go to heaven or hell and or purgatory so it's not like uh you get reborn and you get a second chance it's just what you did in this life depend like depend makes it so where you're gonna go um uh, once nirvana is reached, suffering is ended and re rebirth ceases. So basically, in Buddhism, you even though you have the six realms, um, you have heaven and hell. Nirvana is like one step above heaven, even though heaven to Buddhism is just another realm. Like it's just another life that you can be reborn into. Um, so I think that's really cool that like you you're still like there's still like one higher place that you can get into. Um, so, um, like she said before, she was raised Roman Catholic. I was raised um, Christian as well. And so for us, we just believe in heaven and hell. Um, Islam also believes in a heaven and hell. Um, they call it paradise instead of heaven. And another interesting fact is they also believe in a judgment day. So um, Christianity, we believe um, that, you know, the earth will end at some point and um, whoever is, um, believes in God goes to heaven and then there will be a judgment day where your sins are basically laid out in front of you and forgiven or you're punished. Um, and so Islam also believes in this judgment day as well. Um, so I think that's interesting. And then also, um, Judaism, they, they believe in a heaven or a hell, but they have kind of a wavering um, idea on heaven. So they don't really have like a concrete idea of a heaven and you can talk to different Jews about their beliefs. Some do believe in a heaven and some don't believe in a heaven. So it's kind of hard to determine what everyone believes in that religion. Um, 
but they do have a general sense of some sort or, or form of heaven and hell. Um, so these are just three different religions, but um, most believe somewhat the same thing. And I think that's interesting because it's such a difference from Buddhism. And Buddhism is so different from every other religion in the fact that A, the afterlife isn't really an afterlife. It's a series of afterlives that continue on and on. Um, and then at the end of it, you're kind of just, you fulfilled your duty and you're free of your suffering. And that's unlike any other religion. Um, and we were talking about how Buddhism coming from both Christian um, background, being grown, being raised Christian, um, we find Buddhism kind of comforting uh, contrasted to other religions in regards to death because of the difference in the afterlife. Because in Christianity, you know, you either go to heaven or hell. If you happen to know, someone's at my door. Give me just a second. Uh, so in Catholic or yeah, Catholic, um, it's crazy to believe that there, like once you die, you go to heaven or hell. So you're always still suffering. Um, really suffering or you're in peace. Um, sorry about that. It's my roommates. Um, but I think that's it. Anything else to say? I was just going to say that, like, um, it's just kind of comforting to know that in Buddhism, like, you know that your loved ones are going to be um, kind of with you in regards to they may be reborn into another human, they may be, be reborn into so, that you have over here, or maybe well, like it's to enjoy its natural habitat, or it gets to be, you know, like, um, Something out in nature, and that's kind of how to after their ancestor reaches nirvana, they're free of their suffering. Whereas, um, you're either stuck in heaven, which is, I guess, kind of comforting if, if you know everyone kind of speculates if it's real or not, and then if they go to hell, then they're just screwed. So But yeah, that's all. I and then our last things are our references. I mainly use the book because the book has actually a lot of really good information. I, I use the book as well. And then I also got some um, websites that were interesting to hear about people's um, beliefs. And um, like when I talked about um, how people want to criticize Buddhism for not having souls in the belief of that, but yet having an afterlife. Um, it was interesting to hear the analogies of that scientists and uh, historians would use. So I think that's it. We're done. Okay, that's it. And I'll stop it. Okay. I don't know where you guys are going.